Hey everyone, welcome back to Ragtag Stacking. In today's video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about storing your precious metals. Now there are a couple of different stages of uh, storing them. Uh, the, the first stage would be you know, storing of the individual coins, which makes sense. You got stuff like your, your capsules, your flips, and your tubes. And then the second stage would be uh, where are you going to store those capsules, tubes, and flips. And that's kind of where monster boxes come in and uh, other options as well. And then the third stage is where are you going to store those monster boxes and other options for storing your tubes and flips and coins. So it's kind of, you know, it's tiered up. There's a couple stages of storing. And uh, I'm going to kind of go over the, uh, the different ways that I do it, starting with the individual pieces. And like I said, one of the options is coin uh, capsules. You can put your coins in capsules. Uh, I don't have many uh, coins and capsules. This one is the Queen's Virtue series. So I only have, I'm only going to get five of these ones and uh, it's a six coin series. So I'm going to keep these ones in coin in uh, capsules because I'm going to want to keep them looking nice. And the second way I store coins is in flips. And I'll explain to you uh, how I do the flips is because these coins will eventually go into tubes. But uh, as you can see with the monster boxes, there's a limited amount of space. So I just don't want to throw a tube in there that has, you know, two coins in it. So the most uh, I'll actually store in flips, say like of an American Silver Eagle, where there's two here, the most flips I'll have on the go is three. So that's uh, six of the uh, the coins. Uh, once I get more of a particular one, it's either going to be, you know, starting another flip, which, uh, you know, once you start folding these over and storing them, they kind of slide all over the place if you get them in the monster box. So once I get past six of a certain coin, then I'll store them into a tube. And there are different style, uh, different size tubes. There's tubes, these generic ones here, they store 20. I got some uh, mint tubes here. This is a Canadian, uh, Royal Canadian mint one. This stores 25. But you do have different options for uh, tubes as well. And for junk silver, I have a lot of it in tubes where it's like these plastic tubes. You can see these are some walkers. Uh, the, the majority of the stuff I have uh, for junk silver is in here. But I do have uh, just some other, uh, just taking it out of this little uh, drawstring bag here. I just have some other uh, coinage here where I don't have any dime tubes. I got, uh, you know, some Mexican coins here. Just some miscellaneous junk silver. I like to put that into just like little drawstring bags. Just throw that in here. And same with my gold. You can see my gold in here. I have it in a nice, you know, Crown Royal bag. That's where I keep my, uh, my gold. So yeah, I like those little drawstring bags for, the, as I said, the miscellaneous coins. But that's uh, those are your options when you're thinking about, you know, on the uh, the individual coin level of how you're going to store them is, uh, you know, the capsules, the flips, and the tubes. And now moving on to where you're going to be storing those things. Uh, right now, I have uh, monster boxes. I have two monster boxes on the go. This one's a uh, Royal Canadian Mint one. Uh, the other one I have is a Britannia uh, monster box from the Royal Mint. I'll throw, I'll throw a picture of that one up there. It's got a lot of capsules and kind of uh, you know some other stuff in there. Uh, this one I'm primarily focusing on filling up with tubes. As you can see, I have some 10 ounce bars in there. But as far as what this box was made for, it was made for 20 of these uh, tubes that hold 25 maple leaves. You know, this is the the maple leaf monster box. But you know, the generics fit in there nicely. These are American Silver Eagles and Kangaroos, so those are wider diameters as well. So it takes up more space than this would, and it's still a good option. There's still plenty of space you can easily get 500 ounces in here and there's extra storage on top of these generic tubes as long as let's say you're putting a bar down as long as it doesn't get above the top of the uh, uh, the Canadian tubes then it will fit in under the uh, the top of the monster box as well so if you're good at Tetris, you might be able to fit a, you know, a bit more than 500 ounces in here with just strategic placement of bars and things like that. The next one that I want to get is a, uh, an ammo can. I want to get that for the next one when I'm starting to run out of space soon. Uh, I do want to fill this up with generic tubes. and So yes, I'm still pretty good right now as far as you know room goes in the two monster boxes. But when storage is starting to be a bit of a problem, uh, the next thing that I'm going to get, I think I'm going to pass on getting another monster box and I'm going to pick up an ammo can. That's another good way to store your silver. You can you throw tubes in there. You can throw whatever you can throw in a monster box. You can throw in an ammo can. With an additional bonus thing that I like is the handle. It comes with a handle. This you know this gets heavy once it's full, and you're gonna have to you know. There's plenty of times where there's 
pinch points you have to worry about when placing these monster boxes down. But you know, that is just a, a, an added feature on the ammo cans that a lot of people would look for is just that handle for ease of use to, uh, you know, pick up your, uh, your stuff. <clears throat> and I showed you my drawstring for my uh, my junk silver that I don't have tubes for. Uh, there are some other uh, you know creative ideas that people have used for that. I do like when I see a lot of people have the uh, their treasure chests. Uh, those look really cool. There are plenty of channels that have the the chests full of the uh, constitutional and junk silver, and that looks really cool. And you know it's uh, you know it's not too cumbersome. It can fit nicely into a safe. Sometimes it has a rounded top, so you can't really place another thing on top of it like the monster boxes are flat so you can do it but but sometimes those chests might be a little bit weird to fit into a safe uh, and also I showed you that crown royal bag with all my capsuled uh, uh, gold coins uh, there are some uh, boxes that you can have if you want to uh, keep your coins in there and that is nice it doesn't it doesn't have a huge footprint it can slide in nicely at the top of your safe on top of some other monster boxes and then you open it and you can hold a nice uh, a variety of coins gold coins in there so if the sack the crown royal sack isn't up your alley there are some other options for you know the gold coins you keep in capsules you know it's a it's a nice little way to uh, to store it and uh, it doesn't take up too much space in your safe and the third stage of storing is where you're going to be putting your monster boxes or your ammo cans or your nice box of gold coins or your treasure chest of junk silver you're gonna need a place to store all of that now one option, not a lot of people like it, it is not a very popular option, but one option is storing it off-site. You can have it uh, vaulted somewhere off-site with a third party. Uh, you know, it's they don't do it for free, you know, so you are going to be spending some money to be storing your silver off-site. And again, a lot of stackers, that's not something they're looking to do anyways, but it is an option. So if uh, uh, you just, uh, to throwing it out there, I wouldn't do that. I don't, I'm not looking to store my precious metals off-site. But uh, yeah, th that is an option. Now the option that the majority of people, that the majority of stackers go with, is you know buying a nice safe and storing it, your metals in your house. So uh, ideally you'd want to have it where you can bolt it to the ground. Uh, even more ideally is if you can like encase it in concrete. If you're you know if you're just building your house and they're they're pouring the foundation for your basement, kind of just slip a nice you know uh, safe in there so it's encased in the concrete. That's not going anywhere. But uh, yeah, you're gonna want to find a nice spot for the safe. And you don't want to cheap out on it. You know what I mean? You're going to want to spend a good amount of money. And, uh, you know, precious metals, especially silver, it does add up quickly. So uh, you're going to want to get a nice big one. And, uh, you know, you might need to get more than one. So you're going to have to uh, plan out your spots where you're going to want to put that. So obviously, if you have precious metals in your house, a safe is a good way to keep it safe. And, uh, yeah, again, don't you don't want to cheap out on that. And one option I have heard people say before in uh, some of my comments is uh, burying it in your yard. So, so whether you have a, you know huge acres and acres worth of property, or you just have you know a, a nice sliver of uh, you can say I don't know like a, a flower bed that you can uh, plant it in and just have your nice petunias uh, over top of it. I have heard that people, some people have uh, buried their uh, some of their silver and gold. But yeah, you're gonna have to check. There might be some laws in place or some bylaws where you need to phone to get someone out to uh, to check your yard, and uh, you know they'll spray paint on the grass to make sure that you're not gonna hit any power lines or gas lines. So uh, obviously, you don't need to be telling anyone why you're digging. Uh, if it comes up, you can say, "Oh yeah, I'm putting a patio down, or I'm putting a walkway from my front yard to my backyard." Just want to make sure that I'm not gonna hit anything. You don't need to spill your guts and say, "Oh yeah, you know, I got about fifty thousand dollars worth of gold I'm looking to bury." But if there are those rules or bylaws in place where you need to have the guy come out to, uh, to to check for gas, you don't need to dump your purse out and you know tell him exactly what you're doing with everything. You can just let him do his job. You don't even need to talk to him. They can just come out. They can tell you where the power lines are and then leave. And then just you know now you know to steer clear from this area if you want to uh, avoid hitting a gas line. It's good to know that that is an option, obviously. I haven't uh, buried any of my precious metals, and I don't see myself doing that in the near future. Things might change, who knows? But uh, right now, I do not see uh, a scenario where I'd be burying any of my stuff uh, because you know I have a nice safe and it's good for now, but I can definitely see down the road needing to get a second safe. But yeah, that was just a video I wanted to make talking about uh, how to, uh, to store some of your precious metals. 
And uh, yeah, just a little recap, obviously, you know, the, uh, the first stage would be the uh, capsules, flips, and tubes to store your, uh, your individual coins. Bars as well, I kind of skipped over the bars, but they do have uh, some capsules for those as well if you'd want to, you know, keep those pristine. Then the second stage would be your monster boxes that, you know, or your ammo cans, just a, a way to store, you know, the tubes and all the stuff uh, from the, the previous stage. You need to store that into something. And then the third uh, stage being, uh, you know, storage for your monster boxes or ammo boxes. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. I do know that some people are strictly, uh, you know, monster box. I have talked with some people that are strictly ammo can. Uh, let me know in the comments how you like to store your stuff. Uh, I do need to get uh, some of those tubes that hold the capsule coins. I don't have any of those. And uh, the, uh, the capsules are starting to run amok in my other uh, monster box. So I kind of just want a couple of those tubes so I can uh, secure those coins away so they're not rattling around. But yeah, like I said, let me know in the comments how you guys like to store your gold and silver. But anyways, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I uh, hope you come back for the next one. Thank you.